Can I ask everyone to move into the center of the row so that we can allow for additional people to move into the auditorium? This is wonderful. We have a full house. Good evening. I'm Maria Teresa Pedroche, Head of Community Engagement at the Dallas Museum of Art. I would like to welcome everyone to the Young Masters Award Ceremony. It seems like every year we have more and more um, visitors, students participating. It was exciting this year to have 620 entries, and out of those, 37. Uh, were accepted, so it is a big honor that your works are in the show. Mm. Mm. We're honored to showcase your works created in the advanced placement studio art, art history, and music theory for all of those that are participating in the advanced uh, placement incentive program. A panel of respected judges for each of the disciplines reviewed the total, as I mentioned, of 620 works and selected the 56 works this year. I'm going to ask if you could turn your cell phones off. I should have said that first. For the past 13 years, I have seen the students exhibit strength and diversity within a broad range of styles and expressions. Their autobiographical statements express their thoughts with clarity and elegance. During the late night in January, students were interviewed by Nancy Chernin, staff writer for the Dallas Morning News. She was so excited that she went back to the Dallas Morning News to her staff. And last week, all of the students' works, along with their photographs, their artist statements, were shown, and that is another big honor. It was enriching for the visitors to have the opportunity to talk to students in the gallery. If you missed that late night, and if you want to come back again, the February late night, which will be free uh, from 6 to midnight, will have the students, all the students are invited to come back, talk about their works, be interviewed by everyone from 7 to 9. So you can check that schedule on the website later. I'd like to add that every year that I see this show and I see the visitors and I see the families coming back, I see a lot of more repeat visitors. And the one place they keep coming back to is the Concourse Gallery. It is very popular. There's all sorts of conversations, multi-generational. We have the 
grandmothers coming with the parents and their neighbors and all. And I just want to say that you're inspiring so many future generations, young people, even toddlers. We'd like to congratulate all of the artists for their accomplishments and acknowledge their dedicated teachers for motivating students to reach their full potential. We're grateful to Edith and Peter O'Donnell for their generous support, their dedicated staff, especially Deborah Moore, the AP Arts Director, for creative leadership on this program that builds confidence and self-esteem and inspires the students and teachers to reach the highest level of the arts. I would also like to thank Director Maxwell Anderson, the Eugene McDermott Director of the Dallas Museum of Art, for his leadership and vision for making this place free for everyone. We return to free admission January 21st, and the response has been overwhelming and rewarding because everybody has a voice, and it's not just about coming to a museum that's free, it's about participating, about giving us your point of view, asking us questions, and, and just being part of all the celebrations that happen. I believe that the arts are the soul of the community, helping us to reflect and promote the city's history and the community's cultural diversity, past, present and evolving, and what a better time for everyone to be returning to the museum. So welcome, come back as many times as you'd like. If you have any questions about our new programs, feel free to ask, and onward. Thank you. Good evening. I'm Deborah Moore, and as director of the AP Arts and Music Incentive Program for the O'Donnell Foundation, I too, Maria Teresa, am elated to join the Dallas Museum of Art in celebrating the artistic talents of young masters at this 15th annual awards ceremony. These 56 talented ambassadors represent over 4,000 high school students who have participated over the past three years in the O'Donnell Foundation's Create Schools of Excellence in Fine Arts grant. They are currently enrolled or have completed a College Board Advanced Placement course in one of the th AP Fine Arts courses, Studio Art, Art History, Music Theory. And as grant participants, students have the opportunity to submit original works for the DMA exhibition. Art History students, a 500-word essay in response to a work in the Dallas Museum's collection that spoke to the theme of man and nature. Music theory, a four-minute composition. AP Studio Art, a two-dimensional or three-dimensional work. The O'Donnell Foundation is deeply grateful to the Dallas Museum of Art for hosting this Young Masters exhibition. And of course, we wish to thank Dr. Maxwell L. Anderson, the Eugene McDermott Director, and the many, and I mean many, museum staff members who contribute to this exhibition's success. We are indebted to Maria Teresa Pedrocci, head of the Community Engagement Connections, whose leadership over the past years have brought much deserved recognition to hundreds of young masters and their teachers. The following judges deserve special thanks for selecting the 56 exhibition works from some 620 submitted pieces for consideration. Dr. Susan Bakewell, former College Board AP History, Art History Chief Reader. Erin Cluley, Exhibitions and Public Relations Manager at the Dallas Contemporary. Dr. Blaise Verandino, Associate Professor of Music Theory at TCU and College Board AP Music Theory Consultant and Reader. Dr. Rob Frank, Associate Professor of Composition and Theory at Southern Methodist University. Aaron Hannigan, Principal Oboe of the Dallas Symphony Orchestra, Adjunct Associate Professor of Oboe at Southern Methodist University. Paul Jeans, Foundation Faculty at Maryland Institute College of Art and College Board Studio Art Exam Table Leader. 
Martha McLeod, Curatorial Administrative Assistant for European and American Art at the Dallas Museum of Art. Maria Teresa Pedrocci. Carissa N. Terranova, Assistant Professor of Aesthetic Studies at the University of Texas at Dallas. If you are a judge, would you please stand so that we might recognize you? Thank you. This evening's celebration affirms the relevance of fine arts education and it commends the program's exemplary leaders and teachers honored this evening. The AP Arts Incentive Program is led by master teachers. We have Douglas Derricott, master AP art history teacher, and Dr. Terry Eater, who is the AP Music Theory lead teacher. And both of these are members of the leadership within College Board. Would you all please stand? <laughs> Without question, the success of each campus AP Fine Arts program is directly linked to gifted teachers. You have empowered students to envision and express, observe and reflect, explore and solve, engage and persist as lifelong learners. Please stand, teachers, so that we might recognize you for your dedication. I know I'm joined by teachers and students and parents and distinguished guests in thanking Mr. and Mrs. Edith, I mean Mr. and Mrs. <laughs> O'Donnell, and of course Edith O'Donnell, for making the AP Fine Arts Incentive Program possible. This evening is a beautiful testament to her vision in supporting our nation's young adults as future masterpieces. Thank you. It is my pleasure to introduce our guest speaker, the Dallas Museum of Arts Eugene, Eugene McDermott Director, Dr. Maxwell L. Anderson. After graduating from Dartmouth College and receiving a PhD in art history from Harvard University, Dr. Anderson worked as a curator at the Metropolitan Museum of Art for six years. Since 1987, he has directed a total of five museums, including the Whitney Museum of American Art, and the Indianapolis Museum of Art. He has served on the faculties of Princeton University and the University of Rome, and is the author of dozens of publications, including The Quality Instinct, Seeing Art Through a Museum Director's Eye. Dee Dee Rose, chairman of the Board of Trustees of the Dallas Museum of Art stated, he is someone who understands how to celebrate the values that anchor museums, while fostering innovations that serve both the institution he leads and the entire field. Please welcome Dr. Maxwell L. Anderson. Thank you. That was too kind. Thank you so much. And thanks for getting Didi to say something nice, too, which was unexpected and welcome. And Maria Teresa, thank you for your kind words as well, and Deborah for your introduction. And I recognize that I'm really the only person now standing between the students and the awards. So as a result, this will not be a commencement speech or a prolonged, informed dialogue. It's going to just be a few observations I hope may be helpful to set the tone for tonight. And when I stand here, I stand on behalf of a staff of close to 300 people who work very hard in support of the programs and efforts of our institution. And it's with pride that I represent them today, but thanks to me are not deserved tonight. The enterprise at the DMA is in some ways a simple one, which is to be an incubator of creativity. And we do that both for artists like those here tonight and for the public. And that's why we're so enthusiastic to help present the exhibition of Young Masters. The talent of these young artists is evident to everyone and offers a lot of promise for the future 
of the arts, both in our region and nationally. And they've made their contribution clear in an uninterrupted narrative of creativity that spans generation to generation. The world we're living in is an uninterrupted world, and sometimes to our detriment. And the arts offer an opportunity to put the day's events in a larger context, uh, to separate and uh, pull apart from the relentless flood of images that are part of an information source we're swimming in every waking hour. And I don't know about you, but also some hours when we're supposed to be sleeping. And it can be overwhelming to process the stimuli we're subjected to with every tweet and email and ad and free association. And that's why the very thoughtful and reflective examples of portraiture, still life, landscape, candid photography, sculpture, assemblage, musical composition, and other genres of work in the exhibition speak of the continued vitality of traditional artistic methods, but also of the new insights that are spawned by a born digital generation, which is not as overwhelmed as the rest of us by that free-flowing content that we're living in as non-digital natives. The tools at their disposal are very different from those of past generations. And these tools on their introduction were feared by many as the death knell for originality with digital duplication and photoshopping as initially great sources of anxiety. But what we're seeing outside in the concourse is that there are never any grounds for fear about innovation. And just as prior technological innovations, ranging from the printing press to photography, were only seedbeds for new forms of inspiration. The O'Donnell Foundation, through Peter and Edith in particular, have given us a huge favor in bringing the talents of these young artists to public awareness and offering a platform for those at the beginnings of their productive lives as artists to see the virtue in aspiring to distinction and to putting yourselves in a context for judgment and comparison. It has to be said that the arts are a tackle sport. Not quite like this weekend's, but no less fraught with competition than other fields. But they're lacking in clear, simple ways of evaluating achievement. We don't have an artist's union. We don't have accreditation that confers the title professional artist. And we have a completely unregulated art market. So it's judgment by experts that takes the pride of place. And it's the considered opinion of those judges tonight that the works on view outside these doors exceed the expectations we should have for the best and brightest young artists in our community. So I join everyone tonight who has the responsibility for bringing this program to fruition, including the judges, the teachers, and especially the students, for your participation at the Dallas Museum of Art tonight, which is a place of creative encounters, as mentioned before, now open to everyone free of charge. And if you haven't yet, I hope you'll join as a DMA friend and help us better understand the interests and appetites of every individual who crosses the threshold. And now, it's on to the rewards of the awards. I thank you very much. On behalf of the O'Donnell Foundation, Melissa Berry, AP Arts and Music Assistant Director, will present each young master with a recognition award as they are honored on stage. Young masters, please walk to the stage area marked with a blue X. Melissa, can you point to it? To accept your award. And we want to make sure that we have lighting so that we all can appreciate our young masters. And then you all will exit on this side of the podium and go back to your seats. Art history. Honorable mention. Macy Wong. Harmony with the earth and sky.
third place, Connor Few. Inua, the cycle of the soul. Second place, Stephanie Chen. Greetings to the sea. First place, Benjamin Lee, the face of rain. Congratulations to each art history young master. And now, Ms. Berry will read Mr. Lee's essay, The Face of Rain. And this is Ben Lee's original essay entitled The Face of Rain, which was inspired by the Mask of Tlaloc in the DMA's collection. Rain, thunder, power. All cultures of this earth have been awed by the terrible, beautiful ways nature reveals itself. Water in any language is life. Lightning by any image conveys fear and wander. As the ancient Aztecs reveal, revered the God behind rain and flood, life and death, so do we in our surroundings find common ties that link us with man who lived ages before us. Preceding Roman wax portraits of the dead and other forms of magnifying portraiture, ceremonial masks enabled wearers to elevate their own identity beyond mortality to greatness. The ancient Mesoamericans were particular experts, notably with death and ritual masks, in preserving a symbol in heightened glory. Using such techniques, the mask of Tlaloc, crafted between the 14th and 16th century, immortalizes the Mesoamerican's passion of the enduring marriage between man and nature. Tlaloc, the god of rain, was not man, but of nature. In this rendering, the spirit of his essence, raging storms and violent lightning, has been encapsulated into the likeness of a human. For the mass construction, Mishtek artisans acquired exotic turquoise from the Polom and Poteca, who were long-distance merchants who traded goods from as far as the Sierros mines of present-day New Mexico. The use of such a luxurious medium attests to the dominance of rain and sky over the Mishtek's way of life. Mesoamerican landscapes deemed agriculture essential. So as they were molded by their environment, so the mosaic is comprised of nature's stones. The blue pastel tiles elicit a sense of light water, as if from a shower or river. In antiquity, the mask, with each tesserae pounded paper thin, would have shimmered as if a drop of water or a slice of the sky had been converted into faceted diamond. Symbolically, the elements from the earth, resins, and natural glues bind the individual tiles together. The mask linked to rain is further strengthened by the history of the Aztec Empire. By the 15th century, the Mixtecs, a skilled group of artisans residing in present-day southern Mexico, found themselves within the expanding empire of the conquering Aztecs. Delicate gold and turquoise artifacts left behind these assimilated people groups accredit the name they give them themselves, the Rain People. The stylization of the eyes resembles large pools of water. The long curves in the face could be interpreted as serpents that breach clouds to bring rain. Twisting serpents are also evocative of thunder and lightning, both of which awed the Mixtecs and Aztecs alike. Continual references to animals were employed. The mouth of the mask would have wielded long jaguar fangs, emulative of flowing streams. All of these elements were used to convey a special meaning for the mask. Tlaloc could be benign. Within his eyes were pools of life and nourishing water. But imaging, imagery attesting to his control over the climate reveals a terrible dualism to his identity. He held within his hands death by drought or flood. In ceremony and ritual, the, the mask would have undoubtedly fulfilled its purpose of inspiring wander toward the earth we inhabit. And in tribute, the Mishtecs would have shown their Aztec rulers a powerful symbol of what truly bound their culture to the natural world. Thank you.
And now for Studio Art Awards. Dina Amen, Gear Teapot. Belinda Baltazar, Bedroom. William Nash Blankenship, architectural model in the style of Louis the 15th, 16th. <laughs> Kendall Bradley, self-portrait. <laughs> Austin Carricker, destitute love. Jessica Doling, Nutritious Facts. <laughs> Adea Downley, Radis Norvegicus. <laughs> Danielle Franco, Esperajo Sagrado, Holy Beetle. Shreya Ghoshal, Abstraction. <laughs> Sophia Glasser Kerr, Glass Face. <laughs> 